All right, well, let's get into a little Matt Breida. He was on our free show docket. We didn't have enough time. We moved it over here to the Patreon show for your pleasure. Mr. Breida. Still might put this out on YouTube just to get a little bit of the Patreon out there. So don't be mad at us if you see it on YouTube. <laughs> uh, so he obviously had an awesome game last week coming off of a few bad games before that. Dealt with a various slew of injuries this year. Uh, a shoulder sprain in the preseason, a knee hyperextension, an ankle sprain, another shoulder sprain in week five. And it's kind of lingered, and he is seems to be held on by a string. Yeah. And he just came out here and balled out, got 28 PPR points, looked look pretty solid while the play's going on. Sure. I mean, that catch in the end zone was solid, too. That wasn't just a, a fluke-type pass. I mean, that thing was outside of his body. He reached up and grabbed that thing. And I'm, it, but like you said, it just be, it looks like it's bailing wire and duct tape for this guy. You, <laughs> we watch a lot of 49ers games around here, and it's time after time. It's, you know, Brita's in for a good play. Brita's looking good. Brita's looking good. Oh, there goes Brita. You know, back to the sidelines. He's hurt. And that is one of... You know, we had a question on on Patreon a couple within the last week or two about buying Brita. Somebody was trying to sell Brita, and, and it's it's not that the what you see on the field looks good. I mean, after three weeks, he's leading the NFL in rushing. I bet with a hundred attempts or more, he's his five point six yards per carry is the best in the league. Aaron Jones don't have a hundred attempts yet because he's got a nice little yards per attempt going. Um, he, every time he touches the ball, it looks good. It's right. just he like even last, even Monday night, like the game, he he break off some runs. He in between the lines while the play was happening, he looks solid. As soon as the play's over, he's limping and dragging something back to the sidelines, and it's just it gives you a really bad feeling. And we've we've seen his stock just go up and down this year. And it was up early, obviously, and then with you know, really up after Jarek McKinnon got hurt, and then uh, Alfred Morris, who we all thought was going to come in. I mean, he looked good in the preseason that one game, and he comes in here and Alfred, and and he just gets completely outplayed by Breida, and it, to its most extent, even by Mostert, and you know, so it's Breida's backfield, and it just is so scary, right? So. My thing is you got the Roto World blips right now about Shanahan talking about next season, him and McKinnon. There's no talks about drafting somebody or paying maybe Le'Veon or something fun like that. Tevin. and Or Tevin or, you know, yeah, yeah Kyle, I mean, Kyle's that, boy. If you're a Jarek McKinnon owner, that was an awesome blurb to read because like, sure. you're not even sure they're going to keep him around. They they could get out of his contract. That was the way it was structured off the rip, but then never well, got to even see what I, would happen. I think this goes to show you – how good of a coach and leader Kyle Shanahan is. Some of the other coaches are just too absent-minded, not with it enough to talk about the team in the future and also the present at the same time. Right now, Jarek McKinnon and Brita are your running backs. So well, they're also thinking about the future. I mean, they're two and eight. So no, I'm seven, saying, I, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But I'm saying like what? But you still have for a two like they just lost that game really on the last drive. So they could have had a two-game winning streak going very easily. They just blew out the tank and Raiders, but they blew them out. And, like, even the announcers on TV were saying, like, for a, a team that's lost the seven in a row or six in a row that they had going into last Thursday night, two Thursday nights ago against Oakland, they, like, Richard Sherman, the lead, you know, they, they got people, the players on the team that are talking to the media, like, we're not – we're not one in the season. Like we're not one in nine in here in our locker room. Of course, our record doesn't look good, but we've had things go against us. They're always in. They keep the games close. This happened last year. Obviously, they got Jimmy G and started winning down the season, down the stretch. But in the first part of the season, when they were losing all those games, they were all close games. And I mean, obviously, right now, Kyle Shanahan's not the talk of the town as the best coach in the league. It's Mike Shanahan, and I mean, it's it's um uh, Sean McVay, Sean McVay, and and Nagy. Nagy and 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 Reed over there in Kansas City like right now Kyle Shanahan's not the flavor of the week because his team's not winning but it's not because of lack of effort and it's not because the team chemistry's falling apart in a losing streak you know and so I just feel like that was good on Kyle Shanahan to say something like that about his players right now that are on his team not 
you know. You think McKinnon is going to be a 49er next year? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. Like there's like that's that's my point. That's my point about other coaches who talk about stuff like this in the middle of the season when they might not even know because it's general, it might be the most, might be the general manager's decision. Like I don't know if McKinnon's going to be there next year. I don't know if Breed is going to be there next year probably because he's only in his second year and he's on a contract that doesn't cost him anything. But you know what I mean? Like it's just I'm just saying Kyle Shanahan, just such a good coach, just a forward thinker to just talk about the future with the players he has, not the players he doesn't have. And I just, I like that. I thought that's the reason why he hasn't lost the locker room in a huge losing streak. So that, and but, I mean, they lost their quarterback. What are you going to do? Right. You well, know? well, yeah. And that brings us around on just in that, does do you think breed is going to be here next year? Breed is part of a good system and he obviously knows the system and he's thriving in it right now. So, I think I would be trying to look for a reason, uh, an ability, a window to sell Brita and try to capitalize on his stock in Dynasty. I, th- I think that's a fair point. I mean, he's coming off a huge game, and I think it's clear that the 49ers don't want to lean on Brita. They don't want him to be the workhorse. They, Whether it's Jarek McKinnon or another back that they bring in and pay or draft or whatever it's going to be, there's going to be another guy in the mix here. Agreed. And there's def- he's definitely he, he brought in McKinnon trying to mix things up and have play right. be in specific skill sets and obviously he got it blew his knee out, but that's Kyle's gonna this thing's gonna run through the backfield. The whole everything he does goes through the backfield. And I think if nothing else, Brita's shown a lot this year. Some things some naysayers saying that he couldn't do what he's doing. I, yeah, I mean he's 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 injured. He's, he looks hurt all the time. But when this, when he's handed the ball, he looks really good. I think that's good for Brita. I think going forward, their plan is to have a playmaker in place. And if 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 I'm if I can't sell Brita for a decent price, I could hold him and wait for. You so know. what's a decent price? Man, obviously at this point, Brita's in a package. I don't think Brita's getting you a whole lot by himself. That be here's the thing: my FFPC leagues, the pre, the trade the trade deadlines this weekend. So like. You don't have another couple games to maximize this Breida situation. I got one team where I'll be looking to trade my Breida, and I might sell him a little bit lower just because it's a 16-man cut down at the end of the year, and this one team I don't think is going to – I I can still make the playoffs, but I got enough running backs where Breida it doesn't have to be in my lineup to get me there, you know, uh, Gurley, carry on, et cetera. Um, I just – I don't have – You got Gurley in FFPC league? Sure. Nice. Well, I traded him. I traded uh, Kamara for him. Oh, right. Kamara and um, uh, what's his T.Y. Hilton. Right. I still couldn't be happier about it. Obviously, Kamara went out and exploded last week, but it's fine. I, so I a couple weeks in my mind. Yeah, oh, but dude, no, take nothing away from long, Kamara. Right. Take but nothing it, away from it Kamara. It takes Kamara to get Gurley. Exactly. And what for me? I it's I got I want Gurley in my lineup every week, and that was right after my Mark Ingram came back and was you know clouding it up a little bit and i just i'd I'd do it again i'd do it again it gives me a chance give me give me the most points in that one position as i can i can surround you know i keep plugging other players in my lineup obviously alvin kamara takes a backseat to nobody in fantasy points but except for todd Gurley. yeah if i had to bet who's gonna score the most points this week i put my five dollars on Gurley every week and girl alvin kamara's outscored him half the time Sure, it's fine. I just I feel bad. I didn't have Gurley anywhere. As if, if as much as anything, it was a diversification play. I had a couple of Kamaras, no Gurley. Do what I can, you know. Make the play, make the trade. I'm 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 happy with it. You, I, no, most people won't even trade Gurley. I thought I would have to give up more than that to get right. It, who's giving up Gurley? Right, right. <laughs> so idiots, idiots. So anyway, I'm probably going to end up trying to sell this breed a share of mine because I don't think I'm going to make the playoffs. I still could, but even, like I said, I, breed is not going to get me there. And I'm trying to package up some guys to move my bench around to make me a better team next year in case I don't make the playoffs. i um, not really going to try to assault my starting lineup and gut my chances to make the playoffs. 